So here we are at Zibal Chautan in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. And we're about to see some amazing parts of a very important Mayan site. But first, we're gonna to go to the museum. How you doing, megalithomaniacs? Welcome to Zibal Chautan. This is an incredible Mayan site. It goes back to the pre-classic era though, which is one of the reasons I really wanted to come here. We tried to come here a few days ago, but it was closed due to COVID and we were gutted. We thought it was gonna be closed for good. But luckily it's reopened today, so I came straight down here as soon as I found out. Now the thing that's important about this site, it's aligned to the equinox. They have groups come here at like 5.30 in the morning to witness the equinox sunrise along the Eastern Avenue, the Sac Bay, that rises through and you can see it through the Temple of the Dolls. So here we have some of the amazing statues found at Zibal Chautan. This is a uh, jaguar, a very upright kind of jaguar. Not dissimilar to what we find in Olmec land. Here we have a head of a jaguar on top of a human body, much like this one really, like a human body with a jaguar's head. Absolutely amazing. It's a loincloth and a human skull shaped chest piece with rabbit ears. This is a very interesting anthropomorphic figure. Again, this is just quite incredible. I didn't realize these were here. And we have another anthropomorphic vigor in relief with a scepter in his hand. You can see that, and he's also got eyes down here, some other kind of creature. This is absolutely incredible. So these were like the facades of palaces and other such things uh, found all around the site. So this one, he's got like a maraca in one hand and a scepter in the other. It's also got a hole on one side there, which could have significant meaning. But this is very Olmecoid, which we've, we're gonna find here a lot at Zibal Chowton. This is a column with an anthropomorphic figure carved on it with glyphs. So this is like, got a mask. So we have glyphs down one side. It's also got like a mask, which represents Kawuk or monster of the earth and a dancer above him. You can make that out. And we have more glyphs down this side here. Very interesting, very interesting piece. We have another one here with some kind of warrior or priest around this particular column and you can see some of the detail of like his hands his headdress and what he's wearing these are very interesting these are altar columns again with representations of warriors elaborate headdresses glyphs as well and there's a smoky vessel for burning coals or kapal which uh is what they're kind of holding apparently in one of their hands and you can see all the glyphs you can see the patterns around the bottom of it here and this is another monolithic column with glyphs and this has a reference to the governor, Lord Chuck from Uxmal, who reigned at the beginning of the 9th century. So there's a link with Uxmal with Zibal Chowtan already at this site, even though Zibal Chowtan is probably much older, because as we'll discuss shortly, it has dating that goes back to potentially 2000 BC. And these could be monolithic megaliths that were here before the site was even built were actually part of the megalithic construction like we find at Aki and Izamal. 
Here we have uh, another anthropomorphic figure, the head's being removed. It's wearing a chess piece and hiding a bunch of tied sticks, which are called a tado. This was discovered in the ball court in the South Temple. Uh, potentially a female figure, actually. The traditional um, rigid shack mole um, kind of desire, holding a recipient of some sort. So this is interesting. This is like what we find at Chichen Itza. We find this even up at Tula. And so this could be a Toltec influence here at uh, Zibul Chowton. We're just in the museum here and I'm just blown away by some of these statues we've already seen. We're gonna look at more. There's some inside as well. There's more out on display, but you can just see that there's something older here going on. And this early dating of 2000 BC may have a reality to it because it looks like it's megalithic. And then it's been reincorporated into later Mayan temples. Here we have more kind of Tula-like figures, almost like Atlanteans holding up the world. And we have another one here. So this, I saw either, you know, influenced by Chichen Itza or even Tula, there could be this Toltec thing going on here at Zibul Chowtan. He's got feathers or sort of cape or skirt around him. And we find that on both these statues here. So this is thought to represent what's called the descending god. It's like an anthropomorphic figure associated with sunset. It lacks the head and arms and everything else pretty much, but uh, fragments on it do suggest uh, the legs are out in front and upon his head. Now this is like a yoga position that we actually find on Olmec statues in Olmec land. And so again, are we seeing an influence here? And I'm absolutely convinced the two statues over there we saw first on the way in are actually Olmec. And this is uh, part of the original construction of this site. Here we have statues of ball players of the famous Mayan ball game. And these are supposedly recovered from looting that took place in the Puk region, which is south of here. It's Uxmal, Labana, uh, and all the sites along the Puk route. Their legs with sandals, waist balls, and chest pieces, as well as headdresses that actually represent these type of ball players. Now these this isn't really a Pook site, this is earlier, but it has Pook influences here. And so to find these here is really interesting that they've actually got them on display, they've recovered from looting, which is remarkable. And I just wanna show you some details here. Look at the beautiful carving we have. I'm not gonna put my hand on that cactus. Beautiful <coughs> chevrons and diamonds carving here, which uh, is something we find actually in Europe. Then down here, you can see the leggings with the crosses on and the sandals and footwear. Likewise, you can see similar motifs on these ball players here. Now these look like they're very, very tall, very powerful figures. And the headdress on this one almost has like an Egyptian look to it. This almost <laughs> looks like it could just be like an Egyptian statue. So I don't wanna sort of put it out there that this may be linked with Egypt. Who knows though? It could be, it seems like there's a lot of connections with ancient Mexico, especially the Olmecs and ancient Egypt. This is a stella with a very important person carved on it. It's holding a cane, so could that represent an elder? Difficult to see it, but again, we have this almost Olmec looking design. So this is one of the most interesting pieces. This has got a date of 593 BC carved on it. So this goes, this is like 600 BC. So we're talking about pre-classic era here, potentially linking with the Olmecs or certainly with the earlier cultures here in um, Mesoamerica, even Tamon Chan. So this is really intriguing to me that they've got such an early date carved on this one stella here. Um, and this proves it's a pre-classic site. They know it was occupied from about 2000 BC. So does this prove, and does it suggest because of the type of rock, and it could even be Olmec, or it's, even, it's very similar to the type of stones we see at Lubantu, where the crystal skull was found in southern Belize. So the mystery deepens, and we're only just in the museum part of the Zibul Chow Tun. Here we have a fragment of the god Chak's nose, which is like protruding from one of the temples at the site. With holes in the top as well. So 
So we have a lot of artifacts here in the museum here at Zibble Chow Town. It's very interesting. Mask, two masks. And a sort of doll figure, which is possibly one of the seven dolls that was found at the so-called Temple of the Seven Dolls. So here we have a block of stone which has an image which represents Venus. And we know they were following Venus as part of their great calendar. You can see more detail around this side. And then this bowl as well also features Venus on it as well. Then we have the classic serpent representation of the plume serpent. It's very similar to what we find at Teotihuacan. And you can see a classic serpent head with the plumes coming off it here. And these go all the way down and along. And this would have stuck out probably from one of the sides of the temples or the pyramids. So this is a classic example. Now how old this is, I don't know, but it's probably classic era. Yes, classic era. But yeah, this is amazing. We've got such a fine example here at Zibble Chow Tunnel. We have kind of anthropomorphic jaguars here with glyphs all over them. Very omicoid. Sort of the turtle and the jaguar kind of combination. We have that represented on this bowl as well. We're like a wolf type figure here. This is like almost what you see at Gobekli Tepe in Southeast Turkey. Very interesting, kind of sacred stones. So apparently most of these, in this case here, are pre-classic. Now, it might be, but that's like an Atlantean holding up the world. Like somewhere we find at Tula. These other pieces, possibly. We have this kind of rabbit figure down here. And we have this bird kind of carving here. And we have the classic Czech kind of pook style um, head here, which I think is possibly connected with the Olmecs. If we keep walking along, we have a very interesting seated figure here, which to me looks just like an Olmec and something you might find in the Anthropology Museum in Mexico City. But in the Olmec section, we have this anthropomorphic kind of turtle gentleman. This guy here in the middle is interesting. He's like emerging from a serpent's mouth. And we see the same kind of thing at, um, you know, in Olmec land, Teotihuacan, but also in Comocalco, which is up in Tabasco. Very interesting pieces here. I'll just get these on camera. I can't explain all of them. It's too many, but we'll get what we can.